Hello and welcome to Byju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion is Cyclone Asani. Before we understand what this topic is all about, a gentle reminder about Target Prelims 2022. As part of this initiative, our tomorrow's session would be in reference to environment and ecology and this session will be handled by Mukesh Das sir. Please do tune in from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Let's get started and look into this article. When we speak about tropical cyclones, what are these tropical cyclones? They are low pressure systems that form over warm tropical waters. They typically form when the sea surface temperature is above 27 degrees Celsius. So do remember that when it comes to the tropical cyclones, they form in this part of the ocean and this requires some of the parameters to be met. One such parameters is that the oceanic water should be having a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius, followed by which they need to have strong Coriolis force, little differences in the vertical wind speed, a weak low pressure region or low level cyclonic rotation that already exists as part of the cyclone. And when it comes to cyclones, there are different names that it is called by. It is called by hurricanes where in the Atlantic Ocean. It is also called by typhoon in the Pacific Ocean and it is called a cyclones where it happens to be in the Indian Ocean. So this means they are all the same. The characteristics are all the same, but they are called by different names in different parts of the world. Do remember, this can be very important from the preliminary examination point of view. Now let's discuss about Cyclone Asani. What is the Cyclone Asani? So this happens to be a tropical cyclone which has emerged in the Bay of Bengal area and was moving towards the eastern coast of India. As per the India Meteorological Department, the cyclonic storm is recurving away from the east coast states of India that is Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and West Bengal. And this happens to be a severe tropical cyclone. So what is this Asani? This happens to be one of the cyclone. As of the recent updates, what we feel is that this particular cyclone is not going to make a landfall in Andhra Pradesh, but instead it is curving on towards the eastern part of India. Since it is curving towards the eastern part of India, not making a landfall in Andhra Pradesh, the impact will be comparatively less. So what is that we have to understand here? It is unlikely to make the landfall in Andhra Pradesh and could slowly recurve north or the northeastwards and move towards Vishakapatnam coast and emerge into western central Bay of Bengal. So what would be the likely impact? The impact would be that this particular region will have severe rainfall where in Andhra Pradesh and as a result of which the fishermen are advised not to enter the heavy waters. Then there is Vishakapatnam port as well which has suspended the operations and there are many regions which may see significant rainfall because of Asani. But Asani is unlike any other cyclones that we have witnessed in the past. What is the difference? For example, in the past we have seen number of cyclones like Cyclone Fani or we have seen Cyclone Amphan as well. So whenever this particular cyclone has hit, it has made a hit or the landfall and there have been significant damages to those places where it has made a landfall. But as of now, since Asani is turning or moving towards eastwards and it has yet not made the landfall, the impact would be considerably less. So when we speak about other cyclones, what these cyclones were able to do? They were able to make a landfall. These were coming with a high speed as well. So there was large wind speed as well. This caused significant damage to that particular area. But as of now, since Asani is not made as landfall, it is not going to have a significant impact and the damage would be comparatively less as well. So this Asani happens to be a severe tropical cyclone. Cyclone. What do we understand by severe tropical cyclone? When it comes to the distribution or the categorization, they are called by different types of disturbances or every cyclone has a category. What are the different types of disturbances? It is called as low pressure if it has the wind speed of less than 31 km per hour. It is called as depression if the wind speed is between 31 to 49 km per hour. It is called as deep depression if the wind speed is between 49 to 61 km per hour. Per hour. 
It is called a cyclonic storm if it is between 61 to 88 km per hour. It is called a severe cyclonic storm if the wind speed is between 88 to 117 km per hour. And it is called as a super cyclone if it is more than 221 km per hour. So as of now, cyclone happens to be severe tropical cyclone. So it has a severe cyclonic storm where the wind speed is between 88 to 117 kilometers per hour. Again, there are also categories that are assigned to the cyclone. If the wind speed is between 120 to 150, it is called as category 1. If it is between 150 to 180, it is called as category 2. If it is between 180 to 210, it is called as category 3. If it is between 210 to 250, it is called as category 4. And anything in above is called as category 5. So these are the different categorizations that which is associated with the different types of disturbances that we see in the cyclone. So when we speak about the naming convention, what is that we have to understand? Whenever a cyclone is hitting a particular country, the first thing that comes to most of our minds is that there is a name that is associated with the cyclone. Why is the name given to it? What are the reasons that is given to it? And how are these categorizations happening? Whenever we hear about Tote, Tote happens to be one of the names. This was given by Myanmar. So when we speak about Tote, it was given by Myanmar and in the present situation, what we have is Asani whose name was given by Sri Lanka. So remember, this can be very important from the preliminary examination point of view where this cyclone Asani was given by Sri Lanka. What does this mean? This means wrath and this happens to be from the Sinhalese. How does this work? How does the naming convention work? As of now, worldwide, there are about six regional specialized meteorological centers and five of them are the tropical cyclone warning centers. They are mandated to issue all types of adversaries to the people in that particular country. As of now, when it comes to India, where is India located? India is located along the Indian Ocean region. So we have the India Meteorological Department, which happens to be one of the specialized regional specialized meteorological centers. And in this particular area, we have about 13 countries. Which are these countries? One, Bangladesh, India, Iran, Maldives, Myanmar, Oman, Pakistan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Sri Lanka, Thailand, United Arab Emirates as well as Yemen. All these countries are present in the Indian Ocean region which also includes the Bay of Bengal as well as the Arabian Sea. How does the naming convention work? What would happen? Countries will have to give a specified name. For example, Bangladesh had given a name called as Nisarga. So how is this arranged? This is arranged as per the alphabetical order. Since it is arranged as per the alphabetical order, since countries start giving the name, these names will also be arranged as per the country's alphabetical order. So whatever Bangladesh gives, that will be the first name. Whatever India gives, that will be the second name. Whatever Iran gives, that will be the third name and there will be different columns as well so this will continue up until column 8 so we have column 1 column 2 column 3 column 4 and this will continue up until column 8 how will the naming convention work let's say for example in that particular year there is a cyclone which hits a particular area so first cyclone that hits this particular region will be called as Nisarga the next cyclone in the Indian Ocean region will be called as Gati the next cyclone followed by Gati would be called as Nivar so how would it work it would work first column wise we will have first column which will be having the names followed by the second column if all these names are exhausted so once Mocha is completed we will be following it up by column 2 then we will be following it up with column 3 finally with column 4 and eventually with column 8. So once we have all the names exhausted in column 1 as per the country's alphabetical order we will go to column 2 column 3 column 4 so on and so forth and it will continue up until column 8. Why is it important to name the cyclones? That is because adopting some of the names will make it easier for the identification. If you assign numbers, people would not be able to remember them. If you assign technical terms which are closely affiliated to the geographical terms, people would not be able to remember them. So every country is given an option so that they assign the name and these names are very easy and when such names are given to the cyclones, it is easy to remember. So apart from the general public, it also helps the scientific community 
community it also helps the media it also helps the disaster managers so that they would be able to communicate better they would be able to give information better they would be able to create an awareness and also make sure that there is community participation and remove all types of confusion when it comes to the cyclone naming convention these are some of the advantages as to why a particular name is assigned to that particular cyclone added to it there are some principles that every country will have to follow before it is naming a particular cyclone so the proposed name should be neutral it should not involve politics and political figures it should not have religious beliefs it should not have cultural affiliations and it should not be associated with gender name should be chosen in such a way that it does not hurt the sentiments of any group of population over the globe it should not be very rude or cruel in nature it should be short easy to pronounce and should not be offensive to any member the maximum length of the name will be eight letters the proposed name should be provided along with its pronunciation meaning and voice over as we see in this image we have the name then there is pronunciation as well this should be provided by that particular country then the proposed name as we just discussed should also have pronunciation the panel reserves the right to reject any name if any of the criteria above is not satisfied so if it is in conflict with any of the parameters set by these authorities in such a case they should be in a position to reject them as well the finalized names may also be reviewed during the course of time of implementation with the approval of ptc in its annual session in case any reasonable objection is raised by any member in case reasonable objections are raised the same would be considered they would be given another chance to name up with another name as well and such will be added as part of this list in the column 1 2 3 4 and so on finally the names of the tropical cyclones over the north indian region will not be repeated and once used it will cease to be used once again the name should be new it should not be there in the already existing list of any of the rsmcs worldwide including rsmc new delhi so once we have a particular name that is already assigned that particular cyclone has already created a devastation the same name will not be used again by this particular entity so the name once used will not be used and repeated and as a result there is no confusion in the near future it is this that we have to understand in reference to this topic so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best